So here are some other principles then I'd love to just throw in the pot that I could try and work with at some of those different stages. And I'm going to bring these to life with some different slides in a minute. So confound the intellect. If you just let the intellect and the ego do its work, it will keep you flatlining. It won't unlock the pattern. How do you learn to wander with wonder? The word error actually doesn't mean failure, it means to wander. So how can you give yourself permission to wander and learn new things, to bump into things you never thought you'd see? Allow a new order to emerge. I'll come to that one. How do you actually not be a victim of time, but how do you work with the elasticity of time and space? When are you slowing down time and speeding it up? And lastly, how do you create new belief through the power of disbelief? So I'm just going to quickly fly through these because I used to be in a previous life, not that I believe in reincarnation, teach drawing. And I used these principles when I was teaching a drawing class, which wasn't just about teaching an individual. Often I'd teach communities of, and how they'd work in community with each other. So I'm just going to, if you indulge me, to share some of how they, I use these principles in an indirect context. Now this one is an example of how you always make the unfamiliar familiar and the familiar unfamiliar. Keep undermining the ego, that tricksy thing that tries to keep us doing the same old patterns. So here's a control drawing. This is someone who's a reasonable drawer. Um, a classic kind of one-dimensional drawing. Proportions are quite good. Now, how do you break their pattern in their drawing worldview? Very classic technique. Use your left hand or your unfamiliar hand. Lots of people do this in drawing classes. This is actually using the palms. So you now I'm breaking the pattern of how you hold a pencil. You now need to draw like this. It's a very different way of drawing. This one is actually changing the rules again, where you don't move. You stand here, or someone stands here with a pen, and you now have the drawing board, and you have to move the drawing board. Change the pattern, break the rules. This one is with a feather, but not the nib of a feather, because that's too easy, with the fluffy end of the feather, because it has its own life. It goes where it wants to go. How can you surrender to that? And this one is when they say, OK, now take all of these techniques and bring them together. I've left the control drawing up because you can see it moves from being very one-dimensional to a different world view of drawing. And this takes about 90 minutes to do. How do you learn to wander? How do you let go and just play? Another drawing class. You're only allowed to draw the life figure with one line. Three lines. Five lines, beginning to see something emerge. One continuous line. You're only allowed to use short horizontal lines to find the pattern and let the figure show itself. Or short vertical lines. Or small circles. So that within two hours again, you can unlock people from a very static way of drawing. Another one for me, and I, I've used this, I actually learned this from drawing and I've started to apply it to creative teams and innovation work, is often when you, when you uh, teach, ask someone to draw a figure, they would often start with the top of the head, do the head, the shoulders, the arms, down the body, legs. By the time you get to the bottom of the page, the feet are off the page. It's classic. <laughs> so one way of getting around that is to say to people, actually don't draw it so linearly. Actually make a mark here, where's the top of the head, where's the elbow, where's the foot? And actually start to build the background and let the figure emerge from the background. One of the things for me about creativity and innovation is the breakthrough often emerges from the background to the foreground. People just are wanting the foreground, but it doesn't work like that. So how you teach them to break them into parts, they start to realize you can overlap things. They start to surrender to the complexity of it and the chaos of it. They get lost. 
some starts, the rhythm starts to show itself and some new beautiful order starts to spring forward. I'm not going to show drawings for this one, but in all of those exercises, I would be paying attention to how we speed up and slow down time. When is this against the clock? When do you need to actually use it to really up the intensity? And when do you need to slow things down and let people wander and make mistakes? And then how do you speed it back up again? So today, how can we play with time together, not just be victims of it? And lastly, uh, something I really deeply believe in is if this is a drawing class and I then have played with this and I believe this when I work in any type of organization, teams or innovation work, people always have a belief system. My, the only way I know how to shift someone's belief system when it's in their way is to help them create something they never knew they could do. And in that moment, they say, I didn't know I could do that. I didn't know this was possible. And by default, they have to shift their belief system because it doesn't make sense. So if I take some of the quotes from the people you've just seen, and I won't read them, I'll just let you read them. So I offer these just as to get us started, to throw it in the pot. I have no doubt that you have your own set of principles that we now need to extract and pull together and see what's needed now 